morning, audience, and uh, thank you for joining us in this session about the use of academia at the University of Applied Sciences in Amsterdam. In a few moments, Frans will tell you all about um, academia, but let me first give you a little, little bit of uh, background information about our university. The Hogeschool van Amsterdam, University of Applied Sciences, has seven schools, seven faculties. We have more than 45,000 students now and about 1,600 teachers. And this makes us the, the largest university in the Netherlands, which is not always an advantage. Uh, just like uh, any organization nowadays, uh, the Hogeschool van Amsterdam is a digital organization. Uh, we use a lot of digital tools and sources, a lot of digital stuff, and we produce a lot of digital things. But when it comes to, to the classroom, we see a gap between theory and practice. What we see in the classroom is that only a few people use the, the more sophisticated possibilities of the new technologies. And most teachers stick to the basics. They use, for example, a simple PowerPoint with a picture in it. And this is a good example of a basic PowerPoint. This is why we started with a program uh, in the beginning of 2013. It's called Learning Tomorrow, and it's uh, meant to, to enhance the use of new, new technology in the classroom. In the classroom. Uh, there was some discussion about this name, Learning Tomorrow. Somebody said, shouldn't it be Learning Today? Or should it be, uh, we were already learning yesterday? But this is named Learning Tomorrow, and this it will be. Uh, it is divided in four related programs. The first one is redesign of the educational process. And this doesn't mean that the teachers have to turn upside down their lessons completely, but it means that we want to help them with designing their lessons with some extra tools. Second one, second program is testing and feedback. Third one, digital teaching materials. And some other people will tell you more about, uh, about program one, two, and three at other conferences. So we focus on the fourth program, sound and vision. Uh, in the Learning Tomorrow program, sound and vision, we have three objectives. We want to concentrate and share the knowledge that is in the organization, knowledge about using sound and vision in education. We want to concentrate it and share it in the organization. We want to uh, stimulate cooperation, not only between teachers, but also between teachers and support teams. And we want to organize support as well for the teachers as for the students who use sound and vision. <coughs> Sorry who use uh, audio and video in, in their class, in their education. So far, this has led to three concrete actions. We have formed an uh, expert, expert group, expertise group of people in the university who use sound and vision in their daily work. Teachers, support teams, but also people of the Department of Communication. And we want to come together three or four times a year to talk about the development, developments of sound and vision in the university. Uh, right now we are building a teacher's lab in the new library of the main building of the university. And in this lab, teachers can work with new media, new technologies. And what's more important, they get support doing that. They can practice working with it. And the third thing is we uh, organize training and support for teachers and students. I'm talking about program sound efficient training and support. Uh, of course, there's a, a, a website with a lot of information about what's possible um, with sound and vision in the university. Other things, um, 
about support is the support in the teacher lab we are building right now. And the third thing is that we have specific training for specific sources and techniques. And one of the trainings, one of the courses we organize is Academia in Educational Practice. And the one who knows all about this is my colleague Frans Westgeest. He will continue. You still have to earn it. Um, so, hello and welcome. Uh, indeed, my name is Frans Westgeest. I'm um, uh, I should say I'm not a, a salesman uh, who's going to sell, uh, sell you here uh, academia. I'm just, um, just, I'm just a librarian from the, the Hogeschool van Amsterdam. And let's say I'm a happy user of academia uh, since, uh, since many years. So uh, let me first say in a small nutshell what academia is, because I'm going to elaborate on that much more further on. And if, we, if, the sta if there's still time left, I'm going to give you a little demonstration also. So first, academia, what is it? It's an audio video service, uh, specially designed for uh, Dutch higher education, hence the name uh, academia. And what does it? It does, it, it gives access to um, programs broadcast on public TV. That's, uh, for, for us it's very important and right now it has over 60,000 uh, programs uh, broadcast on public TV. Uh, dating back to, well, so let's say the beginning of TV, 1955 and uh, going up to, well, the, the, the programs which has been broadcasted, maybe not yesterday, but maybe the day before. Um, apart from that, it has some special collections, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to elaborate on that. What is very important for us is that all the rights are cleared. So that means that we can use it in, um, in an educational environment uh, without having uh, any legal problems. Besides from that, it, uh, the Academia website has a lot of tools for editing and sharing and file managing, which makes it uh, easier to work with. And I'm going to show you that later on. Um, but first, to clarify a bit about the importance for us of, uh, of academia, for us uh, educators, let me first paint you a, a picture of um, the Dutch media landscape, which uh, maybe for our uh, German or French colleagues would be like, a, let's say, a Mondrian or a... a, a uh, a Barnett Newman. For us, it's, it's more like a Jackson Pollock because we have at least 17 public broadcasters, and it's not counting uh, subdivisions and uh, coordinating broadcasters. And there is a public broadcast for, let's say, every age, creed, and color. So you can imagine that for us it would be kind of a problem to scrape all the archives from all the different broadcasters to find the right material. Well, that's not the case because we're so lucky to have this one. The Dutch Institute for Sound and Vision. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you've seen it on picture because it has a beautiful building in the outskirts of the beautiful town of uh, Hilversum. And that's already for the building, it is, is it, it is worth a visit. But not only for the building because it has a special mission. It preserves collects, preserves, and opens the Dutch audiovisual heritage for as many people as possible. Um, uh, media professionals, uh, students, educators, and let's say the general public, if possible. It uh, harbors the complete RTV archives of Dutch public broadcasters, and it has over 70, uh, what is it, maybe... Uh, 800,000 hours of television and counting because programs from the Dutch public broadcasters come in every day. They are added to the archives and they are provided with uh, extensive uh, metadata, which makes it very important for us to uh, be able to look up this material. But do we then have the right to use that material? Not yet, because that's where academia comes into play. Academia is uh, entirely a division of uh, sound and vision. 
And what it does, it selects, it makes a selection of the material which is uh, suitable for uh, higher education. It makes a selection of the daily, uh, the daily income of programs and of the programs which are in the archive of, uh, of Sun and Vision. And it clears the copyrights. And that's, that's very important. It clears the cop copyrights. And, well, I, I'm not a legal expert, so I can only tell you the basics how, the, how, how that works. Uh, and, uh, so, um, and I'm on record, so I have to, have to be uh, clear with what I say. Um, we already have this agreement uh, from Sun and Vision, which, uh, which uh, enables it to archive all this material. And part of this agreement is the agreement uh, which is based on the so-called educational exception, which dates back to 1912, which says that material can be used in an educational environment as long as you pay a reasonable fee uh, to the right holder. So based on that, that agreement, Academia makes agreements with all the uh, different stakeholders and rights holders, and they can, uh, of course, refuse for either commercial reasons, for instance, when they want to exploit their material to the web for their own website or uh, DVD, or what they call sensitive subject material. So you have to think about medical pro programs or something like that. So after this clearance procedure, which obviously takes a long time and takes a, lo a lot of work, um, we in our uh, educational uh, institute have access to this material via a login, uh, either in the building or outside, so you can watch it uh, from your uh, sofa as well. And you can always file in requests. So we have this enormous archive of sound and vision. If you are looking for a program of your interest, you can look it up in the catalog of sound and vision and then file a request to academia to have it put in the collection of academia. And they are gonna, they are gonna find out if this is uh, legally possible. So what do we have now? 60, over 60,000 programs as I said, still counting uh, from public TV. And we have special collections uh, uh, and we have also dossiers. So if you are looking, for instance, for a dossier on what, what happened to us recently, the history, the history of social work, um, they're gonna find out if there's any suitable material for this, uh, for this topic and they make a dossier and that's available for you. It's all free of further charge because, of course, we pay a license fee to academia and these extra services are, are free of further charge. About this material, I nearly forgot to say, not all the material, of course, is uh, included in academia. So we ho don't have the, the series, we don't have the soaps, we don't have uh, the, the, the sport programs. Obviously, that we would be uh, commercially uh, uh, would, would would not be possible legally. So you have to think about documentaries. You have to think about news reels. You don't have you do, uh, have to think about programs of uh, current affairs, talk shows, that kind of material. It's safe, safely and permanently stored, so it's uh, always there for you. Um, so you can be sure that if you use it for a, a teaching program this year, it will be there the next year. That's uh, very important, so you don't have to worry about the link you have put in your PowerPoint, if it's still working or not. It's always there. And it's, uh, the, like I said, the, the retrieval facilities are, are very good because Sun and Vision has already added very uh, very extensive uh, metadata to the to the programs, and academia on top puts uh, metadata which are more uh, direct focused on uh, education. There's also um, a virtual cutter and an editor, so you can uh, compile your own uh, your own program. And I hope to be able to show that to you in a minute. And there are, of course, embedding facilities so you can put the programs in your PowerPoint, uh, blog, um, whatever, electronic learning environment. 
And as I already said, file, man file managing uh, tools are also available. Um, I would like to give the floor now to a, well, to a colleague of mine who also is a happy user of academia. And let's hear it why he likes it so much. Oh, what now? <laughs> Well, sorry, I'm gonna F5, F5 here. Oh, this. A... Sorry, where URL, okay. And enter. No. Well, I'm going to try it later on because he, he's <laughs> he has put so much effort in it, so it would be a shame to not use it. Um, but I'm going to, and now I'm going to go directly to the Academia website and give you a little demonstration. So, there we go. I think some of you are already uh, familiar with, uh, with academia. Most of you not, I hope. Um, so, like I already said, we have to log in. And it can be done from your home or from your school. And you use the same login that you use for all the other services at school. Mm -mm. So, there we are. Now, I'm going to do a, a, just a, a search on academia. I was looking for a material about lying. Because um, we had some interesting, interesting cases of lying, uh, public people lying on television. So, I was looking for um, a program. And here we have the advanced search facilities. Um, which is called Labyrinth. And Labyrinth is a scientific program in the Netherlands. Labyrinth, uh, where am I here? And I'm going to add the, the word lying. For obviously, I, I'm afraid it's all in Dutch, so you have to believe me. I'm not lying. Um, and I'm looking it up. So here's the program. Mm -hmm. Do I have sound? Do we have sound on this machine? Because he <laughs> is speaking. This is on the maximum now. No? Well... Uh, I don't know. Well... If it's not possible, just leave it because... 
One of the main things about lying is that you can already look at someone's face to tell if he's telling a lie, so you don't even have to, uh, to hear him. So I'm going to do it without a sound. And what I wanted to show you is that from this pro program, I'm now going to cut a fragment. And I had already something pre-cooked, so I had an interesting fragment on 0.35, and which went on to 1.35. So now I have, have my own fragment. But of course, you can edit it also while looking at it at the program. And I'm going to save it. And I'm going to uh, give it a name, Labyrinth uh, Lie. Labyrinth Lie. So, okay. And now you see it's, it's added to, um, there on the left, it's added to my files. And here you also, you also can see the extensive uh, metadata which is added by uh, the Dutch, the Dutch uh, uh, Institute for Sound and Vision, which is very useful for us to be able to retrieve the material. And obviously that's kind of different with the material you're looking for on, for instance, YouTube, because where are the, the useful metadata? So what I got, wanted to show next was, and that's where... Um, Yesterday evening, reality uh, uh, kept, uh, caught up with me because uh, I was working on this presentation and I was, um, uh, at a certain moment, I had uh, thrown away all my important uh, uh, fragments. So I was looking for the material again yesterday and, and to my big surprise, the fragment which I was looking for was this one. Uh, this is... Um, Maybe I don't know if there's any cycling fans here in the in the audience, but we had a, cyc a cyclist called Michael Bogart. Michael Bogart was, let's say, our lens Armstrong because he recently he came out of the closet as a, a doping user. So, what do you think? He's lying here or not? He's lying. As a matter of fact, you're right. <laughs> Here he's lying. This was before the, uh, when did he came out of the closet? Uh, the beginning of the year, I don't know. So he was still uh, here actually saying doping. What doping? I don't know. You use no doping. And what is doping? Uh, well, whatever. So happy as, after, happy as, uh, as a baby. So what I wanted to do is make an edit. Go back to the desktop. And go to the editor here. And then it's, well, very, very simple. You just put my files. You get your files. And then first, for instance, I'm taking this fragment about this scientist who's telling about how to tell a lie. And then I add Mr. Bogart. Uh, to illustrate this theory, and then you can add your, uh, your text in between and, and whatever. And it's done, and you can show it. You can uh, take it away on your PowerPoint, or you can put it in your blog or on your uh, electronic learning device, whatever you want. So, sorry about the um, absence of uh, sound. <laughs> You have to believe me. Well, this is just a, short, uh, a very short demonstration. I'd be happy to you to, to demonstrate uh, more features of academia uh, during the lunch break or um, uh, uh, this afternoon. I, want, I would like to leave it just here, and I'd be happy to take uh, any question. I'm going to try again. I'm going to try again. <coughs> Sorry, Roy. Um, no, 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 he's disappeared now. <laughs> so uh, my colleague is, 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 uh, won't be talking to me anymore. <laughs> okay, thank you, Frans. Okay, you're welcome. Would you allow me to uh, ask the first question? Sure. 
Um, in my experience, uh, it was very hard to uh, get uh, many teachers and students interested in the use of academia. Mm -hmm. uh, have, do you have an image of the number of people using I don't have the um, image number of people. I recent um, um, numbers I've been getting was that we had uh, over the first half of the year 25,000 hits, but that's that's a single hit on um, the, the the page, the web page you saw where you see the image of the film. The moment that that uh, the, the, this page is uh, reached, you have hit, and there was 25,000 hits. But we have some uh, we have some heavy users of academia so okay. so we 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 hope that the, the 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 use of academia will be increased when the the metadata i don't know if i mentioned it will be uh, imported in the in our discovery tool so that's something for which is which is going to be done in i think uh, a few months so in our catalog slash um, uh, discovery tool Academia will be uh, will be present, so the material will be will be found in context, and then maybe the use will be uh, will be increasing. And I hope uh, by giving courses, because we give courses every well every year, um, and by also including academia in our workshop for students, because if you show the the the, the, the I don't know the problem on in Holland, but. For us, the, the, the biggest problem was that people didn't know academia. That's good. Yeah. So you have to include academia when you give workshops and you explain about different sources of information. And academia should be one of them. And for uh, students as well as for, uh, for teachers also, of course. More questions? Thanks for your presentation. Um, I'm uh, interested uh, on the way you talked about uh, a training you give to the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, what do you advise them to use the material in relation to what type of learning activities in the courses? Can you say something about it? Well, as I, I don't give as much as much advice because it's it's different for 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 everyone. Um, um, because, for instance, the, the colleague who, who was uh, who was talking right there, he used it as, uh, especially to show how, because he's from the social work and he uses uses this for uh, sociological topics to see how to to show how society works. So he uses um, uh, programs of current uh, current affairs just on special topics, but it's uh, let's say it's a one one way direction. But others, the, they, they use it for, for instance, for, um, uh, to, 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 to give them profes professional um, um, examples of, how, of, for instance, a social worker in his daily practice and letting students re reflect on that and asking to them if, if, if they're doing it right or not. And, uh, mostly in in communicating and conversation, and uh, um, so that's more uh, that's more active. So and there's another one that was um, in the school of journalism. I I thought they wanted to uh, compare uh, different types of journalism. So for instance, uh, how the the and that's where our Education, our media landscape uh, comes comes back because he wanted to compare the, for instance, the the the, the, the Catholic way of treating things to the uh, 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 I don't know uh, public way of of of, of treating a, a certain topic. So for every teacher, there is a different um, angle. I understand that for each the teacher is different because that's normal. Mm -hmm. What I hear you say is very interesting because they use it as sample material to uh, that students understand better because mm -hmm. it's from another perspective. Yeah. Understand better what the teacher is talking about. Yeah. They use it to, to analyze material yeah. because they have to make a reflection. And uh, he uses it to, uh, in a higher level, that students have to uh, make creations in differences of bringing information via media yeah. to uh, the yeah. broadcast. 
And that uh, the, the last uh, last thing they can can do themselves easily because they have the material. They can make their own uh, uh, edits. They can make their own films and present it to uh, to an audience. So that's one way to activate the student also. I'm very happy to see that because that fits exactly to our framework of recall. Yeah. Um, because it's also going about lower and higher order learning goals. Yeah. So you're working as well at, with the same um, um, method. Yeah. But sure. then not with lecture capture, but with video. So yeah. I'm very happy to hear that. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Sylvia, many things come together now. Glad. Yeah, thank is that, is that working? Yeah. Uh, well, thanks for the presentation. That was very interesting and uh, really quite a really good system there. Uh, one of the things I was thinking, I maybe missed this when you were presenting it, is there a way for groups of academics to share these lists, uh, either the video lists, uh, playlists, if you like, or the short lists, you know, once they've edited it down? Because I could see how, you know, in, in particular subject areas, it would be quite useful for mm -hmm. people to, you know, share these because one of the things that academics colleagues complain about is it takes so long to find the right clips. So if yeah. there's a playlist that people can go through yeah. and say for some particular aspect of social science, here's 20 clips which might be yeah. useful for you. I, I you. can try to show. It's indeed is possible. Uh, academia, they make their own uh, what they call dossier around certain topics. But you can ask for a certain topic. And then that topic is uh, included in the, the, the total of the, the um, dossiers in academia, and everybody is uh, invited to, 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 to share it. And the, 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 um, the same fragment which I used in the, in the edit of Michael Bogart telling a lie, uh, that was actually done by I don't know who. <laughs> I discovered it only, uh, only yesterday, so that was al uh, already a fragment uh, of a, a total newsreel, I guess, uh, which was included in the, in the academia material. So you can share it uh, with your colleagues in your own institution, or you can make a dossier and share it with uh, any other licensee of academia. It's possible. Questions? No more questions. Sally? Just a question as to whether you're involved in the EU Screen Initiative. You know this initiative of the archivists, the, the uh, broadcast archivists across Europe, which Building the Loud is, is uh, leading a project. Yeah. 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 Do you see any connections there? It's just that that would make logical, make some sense in terms of, of making these materials available through, you, which goes then through um, uh, Europeana as well. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I've heard from it. I, from my side, I, I see a lot of uh, same, uh, let's say, same goals. I don't know. I, I, I don't know if uh, uh, on the academia side there is. I, I think there is uh, attention for it, but I, I, I can't be sure. But I, I think they, they are uh, they already aware of the the the, uh, the initiative, and they sure will uh, have looked at it. But yeah, it would make sense. Yeah. Because that that would open up a lot, much larger uh, source for information. Because I I don't know how it is in, in with the, the BBC archives, for instance, or uh, in France. It, I'd f it's yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but it's it's a huge work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very very well. Yeah. Your last chance for a question. Okay, then we're going to have a bit of an early lunch. Thank you, Franz. Thank you, Paul. Thank you.